Hello, and thank you for listening to my paper. I'm Wendy Rogers. In this paper, I will discuss the following issues. First of all, diagnosis and overdiagnosis. Second, some of the issues that drive thyroid cancer overdiagnosis. Third, the ethical issues that arise from overdiagnosis. And fourth, I'll make some specific comments about the Fukushima Thyroid Examination Program. Diagnosis is central to medical practice. Through the process of diagnosis, doctors identify the presence of specific diseases and can then offer information and relevant interventions to minimise harm from the disease. For patients, a diagnosis can help to explain symptoms, offer reassurance and guide future healthcare decisions. The value of a diagnosis is tied up with its accuracy. How well does the diagnosis track the disease in question, inform decisions about treatment and thereby preserve the patient's health to the greatest extent possible? Overdiagnosis refers to the detection of conditions that, if left undiagnosed and untreated, would not go on to cause symptoms or death. Overdiagnosis refers to something going wrong with the process of diagnosis. Instead of identifying the presence of disease, leading to benefits from appropriate treatment, overdiagnosis identifies diseases that do not need treating and patients do not benefit. The key features of overdiagnosis are, first, that based on currently accepted criteria for detecting the presence of the disease in question, the diagnosis seems correct. And second, the diagnosis does not provide benefit and may cause harms because the diagnosed disease did not require intervention to keep that person healthy. The concept of overdiagnosis is difficult to understand because it is counterfactual. If the condition had not been diagnosed, it would not have caused harm. We can't directly compare it to anything else. At an individual level, it is difficult to show that overdiagnosis has occurred, as it is not possible to differentiate between a useful diagnosis that detects a harmful disease that will benefit from intervention from overdiagnoses that detect harmless instances of the same disease. However, overdiagnosis can be clearly observed at the population level using epidemiological studies. These show a gap between increasing numbers of cases detected and relatively static morbidity and mortality rates. If all cases of detection were of harmful cancers, for example, then morbidity and mortality rates for those cancers should decrease. But this does not happen, they remain stable, indicating that many people are overdiagnosed through detection of harmless disease. Why thyroid cancer overdiagnosis? Why is overdiagnosis a particular problem for thyroid cancer? There are various reasons which are biological and social in nature. First of all, the natural history of thyroid cancer. Differentiated thyroid cancer grows slowly with no clinical symptoms for years or ever. Um, so that means that thyroid, differentiated thyroid cancers are present in people's thyroids for long periods of time, for 10, for decades. Second, thyroid cancer is common. We know this because a substantial reservoir of thyroid cancer is found at autopsy. It's present in around one third of people. This shows that there's a large pool of harmless cancers that people don't know about while they're living. The third reason um, for thyroid cancer overdiagnosis is social, and this is due to new technology. The use of new and more sensitive investigations, such as high frequency ultrasound, detects that reservoir of slow growing cancers. 
the more tests we perform, the more thyroid cancer is detected. In South Korea, the rate of thyroid cancer diagnosis rose 15-fold following the uptake of routine ultrasound thyroid screening. But there has not been a corresponding fall in advanced cases, indicating that nearly all of these are overdiagnoses. Overdiagnosis of papillary thyroid cancer is a worldwide problem. It is estimated that 50 to 90 percent of detected papillary thyroid cancers are harmless in that they would not go on to cause symptoms or death. Overdiagnosis causes a number of ethical issues. The main one, or the most important one from my point of view, is that patients are harmed by overdiagnosis, but they get no corresponding benefit because the condition that's overdiagnosed would not have harmed them. I think about the harms in four different ways. First of all, physical harms. Thyroid cancer is commonly treated with surgery associated with significant morbidity, including general surgical complications such as fever or infection, and thyroid specific complications such as vocal cord paralysis and post-surgical hypoparathyroidism. Other physical consequences of thyroid cancer treatment include hypothyroidism requiring lifelong daily thyroxine replacement together with an increased risk of atrial fibrillation and osteoporosis. Second type of harm is psychological. Psychological harms arise from the impact of being diagnosed with a cancer. The consequences can include ongoing disruption to everyday life due to persistently increased cancer worry, fear of recurrence, a heightened sense of mortality, and a disruption to personal identity with the loss of the person's anticipated future uh, in good health and living a long time without cancer. The third type of harm is social. A cancer diagnosis affects patients' social participation and relationships, as well as their employment and careers. Ongoing treatment and follow-up for thyroid cancer is extensive and can limit the time and energy that patients have for socialising or attending work. Finally, patients suffer financial harms. Cancer diagnoses, including overdiagnoses, generate significant financial burdens which are worse if patients do not have access to public health services or adequate health insurance. For example, in the USA, people with thyroid cancer are three times as likely to become bankrupt than individuals without cancer. These harms to patients associated with overdiagnosis are not balanced by any corresponding benefits. It is not in patients' best interests to be overdiagnosed and exposed to these harms with no associated benefit. A second set of ethical concerns arise around the practice of informed consent. Valid informed consent for thyroid cancer diagnostic procedures can be challenging for a number of reasons. First of all, many physicians do not fully inform their patients about any harms from screening because these harms are often poorly understood or ignored by physicians. Second, overdiagnosis is difficult to explain. There is little public understanding of overdiagnosis. Third, there are multiple pathways into thyroid cancer overdiagnosis, which makes it difficult to support informed decision making. Thyroid cancer is often an incidental finding during investigation for an unrelated health problem in which case the physician involved in that problem may know little about thyroid cancer or overdiagnosis and not be able to fully inform the patient that the tests they're doing risk thyroid cancer overdiagnosis. Fourth, there are no validated decision aids for screening detected thyroid cancer to help patients navigate um, the choice about whether or not to undergo screening. And finally, shared decision-making is uncommon as physicians tend to direct decisions about thyroid cancer treatment. 
Recent Australian research found that patients were simply told that surgery, surgery would be curative for their cancer and none were offered surveillance or shared decision-making, even for very low-risk cancers. There are a number of other ethical issues. One of these is costs. Overdiagnosis generates financial and opportunity costs for health services. Treating overdiagnosed conditions is wasted expenditure as it does not decrease patient morbidity and mortality. The direct costs of thyroid cancer overdiagnosis are significant. In the USA, the annual cost of well differentiated thyroid cancer care is estimated to be over $1.5 billion. And we must recall that many of these patients, if not all of them, would not have come to any harm with no treatment. As well as direct costs, there are opportunity costs. Treating overdiagnosed cancers diverts funding away from the prevention of symptomatic diseases that do threaten health. Fee-for-service fee -for healthcare systems create financial conflicts of interest as physicians benefit financially from the more investigations they perform. This is a challenging problem to address as patients often think that a doctor who does a lot of investigations is more thorough or competent than one that does not and do not understand the risk of overdiagnosis. The final ethical issue to mention here involves the impact of overdiagnosis on trust in the patient-doctor relationship. In general, patients trust that doctors will act in their best interests by advising effective interventions to protect their health. With a condition such as thyroid cancer, doctors cannot be sure that surgery is the best treatment for a patient because of the risk of overdiagnosis. But discussing uncertainty can undermine trust and lead to confusion. In the final part of the talk, I want to speak briefly about the Fukushima Thyroid Examination Program. Concerns about thyroid cancer in children exposed to radiation after the nuclear power station accident led to this um, program, which screens children using high resolution ultrasound. As of November 2021, the program has diagnosed over 250 cases of thyroid cancer in children. However, it's likely that many of these are overdiagnoses rather than thyroid cancers related to radiation exposure. The fact that children are the patients increases some of the ethical concerns I identified previously. First, the diagnosis leaves children with a lifelong cancer label, depriving them of the right to an open future. Second, the treatment is lifelong with associated costs and health implications. Third, the screening program has led to significant concerns and anxiety about cancer amongst the children screened and their parents, even though the risk is very small. Fourth, many of the children, particularly for first screenings, are too young to give informed consent. And finally, there are barriers to informed consent related to lack of public information about thyroid cancer, fear of radi radiation from the accident, and difficulty in understanding test results. This raises questions about the future of the program. The Fukushima Thyroid Examination Program causes more harm than good, even though it was set up with good intentions. Instead of mass screening, voluntary individual screening supported by high quality public inv information is a better ethical alternative. This will allow individuals to discuss their particular concerns and to be supported in making informed decisions. Some people may still be overdiagnosed, but they will understand the risk of this before undertaking screening. In, ad in addition, clinical screening by palpation rather than by high sensitiv sensitivity ultrasound may be more appropriate, as this will lead to lower rates of detection of micropapillary cancers which are overdiagnosed. In conclusion, thyroid cancer overdiagnosis is an internationally recognised problem causing harm to patients and increasing healthcare costs. Thyroid cancer is overdiagnosed for biological and social reasons causing significant harm. The program causes lifelong harm to children who are overdiagnosed and should minimize harms by stopping mass screening and providing better public information and ensuring informed consent. 
the Fukushima thyroid examination program could avoid many of the harms by stopping mass screening and moving to a voluntary program accompanied by high quality public education. These measures are urgently needed to avoid ongoing harms from overdiagnosis. Thank you.